All right, everyone, it's Wednesday, section two. So let's get started. All right, today we're gonna review what we've been working on through wave hands like clouds to this second single whip. And then we're gonna add in high pattern force and see how much time we have left. So let's start with our warm ups because a lot of us spend a lot of time sitting for work right now. So just starting with the neck, we're just gonna draw the chin to the chest up and back looking up and looking down. Just doing a couple of movements. Really focusing on that looking up from all the screen time that we have. And then we make our way back to center. We're gonna turn our head from left to right. Just like single whip, looking all the way over the shoulder, side to side. And then we're gonna bring it all together. So dropping the chin to the chest, ear to the shoulder, head back and around. Couple of nice big circles and then the other direction. On the last one, drop the chin and then raise the head up slowly. All right, so onto the shoulders, right? We work our way top to bottom. So up and around. You can start back, you can start forward, whatever's good. You can have as much or as little arm movement that feels good today. And then we're gonna go the other direction. And then if you're going forward this time, take one back, kind of resetting everything. All right, onto the elbows. So big circles. You can just move them like this, or you can work them together with the wrists. Whatever feels good. Because we're gonna do the wrists next, and then we're gonna go the other direction. Just focus on the elbows. So remember how we were talking about three-dimensional space? Kind of trying to keep those elbows in that same spot. All right, onto the wrists. So if you want, drawing them in with the elbows or just rolling the wrists, maybe making figure eights, whatever feels good. If you're rolling them, make sure to go the other direction. All right, one more circle. Shake out the arms and then onto the hips. So shoulder width stance. You can place the hands on the hips, side and around. Nice big movements, warming up the hips. Really take this time while we're warming up. Have a nice, even, continuous breath. All the way down to the Dantian. Really doing that belly breathing to bring it through to our practice. All right, so onto the knees. Two ways, you can do it wide stance and move from side to side, or just have your feet together and just making circles with the knees. And again, we're gonna go the other direction. And then we're just gonna come back to center, standing up. We're gonna work on the ankles. If you have something next to you that you'd like to hold on to, you feel free. So we're gonna pick up one leg and just rotate the ankle here. So just drawing small circles with the ankles. You can keep the foot on the ground and kind of rotate the heel if that feels more comfortable and you don't have something to hold on to. And just make sure to go both directions. So whatever feels good. And then we're gonna to switch to the other leg. Again, holding on. It's just standing, practicing your balance. We're keeping the toes on the ground and really moving the heel in a circle, okay? other direction a couple of times. And then we're just gonna shake it out. Remember last week, we're gonna draw the shoulders up and then throw the body weight down. So up and down, whole body. You'll hear my voice shake as I do this. And just a couple really throwing the shoulders down, relaxing the body. And then eventually we just ease off and come back. Get a little bit of cheek flow in there. All right, so let's start at cross hands and let's go all the way through to single whip. All right, 
Uh, we can't hear you, um, Michelle. You can't hear me. Correct. Okay. I'm going to... I'm not sure where on your headphones. Can you hear me right now? now? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Some technical difficulties with my uh, headphones today. All right. So cross hands. Embrace the tiger. Move the weight to the right, turning. Separate the arms. Two circles, step, open, and show striking. Roll back, up and out to connect, turning at the end. Press, circle in, touch, pressing out. Open up the arms, pulling back, sit up the palms, and push. Fist under elbow. Move back the weight, turning. Big circle, push out to the side. Step, warding off, rotate, changing to empty stance, showing fist under elbow. Repulse monkey. Circle, natural step, one arm forward, one back. Number two, circle, step, show striking. One more time, number three, hand in front of the shoulder, step, strike. Diagonal flying, big circle with the arms, open up, show splitting energy. Raise hands and step forward. Move back. Change to empty stance. Waist turning. White crane. Circle the arms. Changing. And stepping out. Empty stance on the toes. Brush knee. Right arm comes down. Two circles. Step out. Open. Show striking. Needle at sea bottom. Shift forward. Pull back. Come up on the heel. Change to the toes. Sinking down. Fan through the back. Touching by the wrist. Bow stance. Open up. One forward, one back. Turn body. Chop with fist. Make the fist. Show chopping, and then come into your bow stance as you show striking. Parry, block, and punch. Connect, parry down, step, parry out. Hold your opponent back and show punching. Grasp the bird's tail. Transition, and then ward off right. Roll back. And press. Push. Single whip. Big circle with the arms. Making the hook. Step out and show striking. Wave hands like clouds. Move back the weight, turning. Arms come to the side. Two circles, shoulders to the corner direction as our arms are to the side. Double wide and then to center. One more time, double wide. Stepping out, single whip. Okay. Good practice. Does anyone have any questions on those movements that we've done so far? Okay. 
So today we're going to start with high pattern horse. So I'm just going to do it one time so that you can see what we're working on and then we'll break it down. So from single whip, we're going to do high pad on horse. So it's moving back the weight, changing and striking to the throat. So not too bad, right? Our stance doesn't change very much in this one. Neither do the arms. So we're going to start with the footwork. The footwork is relatively easy because we're in a bow stance with our left leg forward. So all we're going to do is we're going to move back our weight. And when I say move back, we're going to move it into the bubbling well of our right leg, keeping our knee in line. Our shoulders are still open to the side. And then we're going to pick up and change to the toes. So the foot comes in and to the center. Now here we want to be careful. Can we pull our foot back and our footwork is not crossed? That's very important here. So from our bow stance, move back the weight, come up on the heel, pick up, change to the toes, and then the waist, shoulders, and everything turns as you put that 30% into the ball of your foot. Okay, how does that feel for everyone? Pretty, pretty simple, right? Okay, so let's talk about the arms. So we're in single whip. We have one arm straight and one arm to the corner direction. The left arm's pretty simple because it's just gonna rotate and turn up. Then it's gonna pull back. So if you can see at the camera, when I'm here, my body's open to the side, right? And I pull back, but I'm not pulling back like this. I'm not just going straight and my elbow's coming in. When I pull back, the arm sits out to the side. So we want to make sure that the armpit is open. We still have energy flowing through this area, okay? So it just turns and then just pulls back. That looks good. Okay, so the hook hand. So the hook is at the corner direction. What's gonna happen is we're gonna open up the palm and as we open up the palm, the elbow bends a little bit more. So it's sitting up. So it's not sitting up like a palm strike, but it's sitting up. And then it's just gonna draw in. So remember the three dimensional space? Did you see what happened after I went from the hook and I dropped down? My elbow didn't change very much. From here, it's just going to strike out. So you want to imagine that from here, we're going to your own throat level and we're using this edge of the palm. So we're always looking at ourselves, and the camera is actually a good thing because you can see the level that I'm at here. So if we put them together, just standing here, we don't need to add the footwork yet. Hook hands to the corner. Striking hands straight, body's open to the corner, right? So we're going to relax the right palm and start turning over the left. Then we're going to continue turning over, right arm comes to the shoulder. Now here's where we have our one forward, one back as our shoulders turn to square. That looks really good. So the only thing we want to be aware of is here, we don't want to have the elbow up. Right, there's a big difference from elbow up and elbow down, shoulder down. Can you see the difference that occurs in that little movement when I just relax my arm down? That's what we're always going for. Even though our arm's up, try to keep your shoulders and elbows down. Okay, just one more time with the arms and then we'll add in the footwork. So we're here at single whip. Open up the hook hand, rotate the palm, comes in front of the shoulder, and then one forward, one back as the waist and body turns to the straight direction. And here we want to note that this is kind of under the, by the rib cage, the lower ribs here. We don't want to cross the center line. We don't want to have it too far back or too far forward. We want to kind of find that balance. And it's the same with the shoulder. I'll turn this direction for a moment. We don't want to have it back this way. We don't want to have it too open. About to the corner direction. Shoulder and elbow relax down. Okay, 
Nice, Marilyn, looks good. All right, so let's put it together. I'll face the camera. Maybe that'll make it a little bit easier. So we're in single whip. Make sure here before we start that you have a natural bow stance. Because when we move the weight back, we don't want to drag the foot. We don't want to drag it to the side. We don't want to pick it up and kind of jerk it around. So natural stance always. All right, single whip. Move back the weight, open the hook hand, rotate the left arm, draw the, the palm to the shoulder and pick up and change to the toes. And then one forward, one back, waist turning as the weight moves into the left foot. Okay, how is our empty stance looking? Are we folded from the hips? Do we move too much weight forward? How does it feel? Is your right leg burning a little bit maybe? All right, let's do it again. So natural stance, I'm gonna turn this direction now. Single whip. As you move back the weight, open the hook, rotate the palm. Then the right hand comes in front of the shoulder, chain to the toes. One forward, one back as the waist turns and weight moves into the ball of the foot. One more time. Check your left elbow. Is it to the corner? Is your right arm down, elbow sinking down? Are you in an empty stance folded forward from your hips? All right. We got a lot of video today, so I'm gonna ask you to do it by yourself. The rare time when I can see everyone. So starting that single whip, moving into high pad on horse. So move back the weight, open the hook, turn over the palm, hand comes to the shoulder, changing, striking one forward, one back. Everyone hold for just one moment. It looks good. It looks good. Okay, let's just make sure when we do this movement, have this curve in your arm. I don't know how to show you this. Maybe if I put it down. Do you see the curve in my arm here? That's so that this is being shown as the striking edge. So we don't want to have it too much open. We really want to make sure that this part of the palm is showing striking. Right, Donna, exactly. We're going to show this to the edge of our opponent. So this is going to go to the throat here. Great. Okay, let's do it one more time. So from single whip, move back the weight, open the arms, right hand in front of the shoulder, change to the toes, waist turning, weight moving forward, striking. Okay. All right, does anyone have any questions on this movement? So Marion, so one quickie. So when you say you want to show the flat more of the inside of your hand. I can't hear you, Marion. Oh, so sorry. You're unmuted, but. Can you hear me now? Can anyone else hear Marion or is it just me? Yeah, I can yeah, hear Yeah, she's real loud. Yeah. <sighs> That's can weird. You. Can you hear me now, Cheryl? Okay, now I can hear you. Again, okay. my headphone, problem. I'm so sorry. That's okay. So again, just reviewing. So when you are, you're gonna to strike to the throat, you want more of the side of your hand showing and to accomplish that, you need to bend your elbow back a little bit. So yes, it's not it, too bent, Okay, but it's bent. Well, my hand only bends as far as it bends. So in order to make yeah. it flatter, I have to angle my elbow out a little bit more. So- That's okay. You'll get more and more used to it. Okay. It'll so. like, like it's flexibility, right? So that's why we start with okay. all the movements. So if a little bit more elbow bend accomplishes that for you, no problem. But more important to get the right shape than to try to extend it. And cause I'm, I'm used to thinking that I'm gonna be reaching out towards somebody, like really out, you know, which means, you know, it's hard to keep your hands to get the reach you need without overextending your shoulder. So I wanna keep my shape. So my, my striking distance isn't very, isn't very long. In order to do everyone's that. arms are different though you know that, like we're all gonna have a different reach and you do okay. want that that's fine okay all you right. got to go with your body shape the form is going to look different in every single one of us right okay. even if we perform the moves in the exact same way with every single detail being exactly the same 
it's going to look totally different because the size of our limbs, the size of our torso is all completely different. I think, when you know, we so follow teachers, we try to replicate what we see in their bodies and it's maybe we're not, at least I'm not always recognizing the difference in that. So that makes total sense. Well, something to recognize for me is I have extremely long arms. So when you see me do something, it looks like I'm so far away. But that's because my arms are so long. Well, so don't video, try to reach as far as I'm reaching. Yeah, and with video, it's a little hard to see the detail unless you come up to the camera really close. So at least for me. So okay, thank you. Thanks. Well, that's why I, that's why I try to come closer. And I've realized this is as we're doing these Zoom classes is that you know if we're working on these details and it's only the upper body, I want to give you guys the best view possible, because I know how hard it is to learn from videos. I've been there myself. I've done it, you know, so I want you to get as much as you can. If, if there's anything that I can do to help you through this process, say going a different direction or something, please let me know. All right. Cheryl? Anyone else have a question about? Yeah. Yes, sure. Uh, John here. Yeah, I was wondering, you know, the left hand at the final position, how far do you move it out a little bit or is it pretty much closer to the lower rib like you indicated? It it's very close to the ribs move here. It at all? It's it's not yeah. out to the side. Okay. But is it close to the uh, to the right hand, I guess? Is it this way or this way back? It's, it's a way it's next to your body. Okay. Okay, so the thanks. right hand is extended out and then the left hand is by your body. So that it's not out in front at all, because what happens is, is that you could pull your opponent into this movement, right? So you would be separating, you could grab them and pull and show the striking. So you would end up with their arm back here and their throat would be out in front, right? That yes. looks good, John. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? A question on the hook. When you're unhooking, do, are you then mm -hmm. seating the wrist? Are you, how, how far? So, so we're not coming up into a palm strike here. We're in, we're from the hook. We're right. just relaxing the elbow down and okay. sitting up slightly. So it's not sitting like it would be striking. But it's, it's not flat. It's, not it's flat. Okay. seated. Seated, yes. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. All right, let's do it again from single whip. Nice natural stance, right? Looking at the left palm, past the left palm. Move back the weight, open up the hands. Draw the right hand in. We're going to pick up, change to the toes, and then one forward, one back. Striking to the throat, drawing your opponent in with your left arm. Now, how's your bow stance? Are your shoulders and elbows sinking down? Is your armpit open on the left arm? That looks great. Good job, everyone. It looks really, really good. All right, so does anyone have any more questions? All right, so we have a nice chunk of time left. So I'd like to start working on the first kick throughout this kicking session, the first separation kick. So we're gonna work on it today, but don't worry because next week we're gonna work on the first separation kick and the, separation, the second se separation kick. It's a tongue twister for me today. So I just wanna get started on it and then, you know, as you practice this week, if you have any questions, then we can really focus and hone in because the circles that you make within this movement can sometimes be really difficult. So I want to make sure that everyone has a good grasp on it by spending a class and a half on this, okay? So I'm going to do it one time, and I'm going to do it facing. Cheryl, you're breaking up. And you're frozen. Yeah. Okay, Pierre. <laughs> I think we've lost her for the moment. 
So uh, let me just uh, change my view here. Okay. So uh, I'm not in the ideal space, but I'll just keep talking until she comes back. So we're going to do a left and right separation kick. Uh, and let me just go through the movement and show you what it looks like. And then we'll start breaking and then we'll start working on the pieces. So we've done high pad on horse. You can't see my feet here. We'll, we'll do that separately. But the first separation kick is we open the arms. We step out, the arms cross. They circle out. We then close the arms into an X, stand up and kick out. That's the first one. And that's what we'll focus on now. So the first part that we're gonna look at is the, the footwork. And so we've done um, high pad on horse. Uh, and so I will, I will, um, I will marry you. So you're on your left foot with your right, your right empty stance. So the, the right foot is forward. You're going to bring your foot in and step it out less than corner and shift your weight forward into what is essentially a bow stance. So we'll just do that again. I should just give me one second. I've just heard my phone buzz. That might be Cheryl. Let me just see. Yep. Uh, let me. That Cheryl. She's completely lost internet. Oh no. Um, she's not sure why. Uh, actually, somebody had an Xfinity problem the other day. So let me just text her, and we'll keep going. Okay. The joys of Zoom. All right. Okay. So let's uh, practice the footwork. I see her. We're in an empty stand. I'm here, but I don't know for how long. I ah, connected okay. to She's another back. internet. <laughs> Go ahead. You got it. I just started on the footwork. Okay. Perfect. Thank you, Pierre. I'm so sorry, everyone. I don't know what's going on with my internet connection today. It's very spotty. I'm going to leave the Bluetooth headphones off so you guys can hear me since there's so many technology glitches today. All right. So the footwork. All right. So from our empty stance, we're going to the straight direction. Now we're going to go not quite corner, not straight. So we're going to move back our weight. We're going to pick up and then we're going to change to a transition. So it's not quite a bow stance. So it's not quite corner, it's not quite straight. And we're gonna move the weight forward. Then we're gonna pick up the rear leg for our kick. So here we wanna kind of be to the corner direction, toe pointing down, very important, toe pointing down, and maybe the legs turned in ever so slightly. And then when the arms open, we'll kick, okay? So I want to stress here that stability is the most important thing, right? So when you get into this kick, come wherever is comfortable. They do say that they'd like us to be parallel, but kick low if that's going to give you stability here, okay? I want you to feel stable throughout all of these kicks. That's one of the most important things, okay? So really try to feel your whole foot's connected to the ground. And like that, there's that string pulling you from above here. And then when we have the arms in it, it will help. Okay, so just the footwork again. So we're in an empty stance, the straight direction. Maybe if I move this way. Pick up, draw in, stepping out, move the weight forward, take up the kick. And then Okay, how do we feel with the footwork? That's kind of the easier part of this movement, all right? So now for the arms. So we're gonna make two circles on this horizontal plane here, all right? So 
when we're in high pattern force, what's going to happen is both arms are going to open. Okay, not too far. Just open. And then the right arm's going to come in by the shoulder as the left arm circles out. And then they're going to get to cross when we step. Then the right arm's going to kind of swing as the left arm pulls out. From here, we're just going to close the right arm over the left, and then both arms circle up and down. Good, that looks really nice. Okay, so we're in high pad on horse, okay? Both arms open up to the side, not too far. We wanna keep that rounded shape. See the roundness here in the arms? And then from here, one goes out, one in, then they cross, and then they pull apart and across each other. Nice. And when we end, the left fingertips should actually be pointing towards the right forearm here. Okay? And then after that, we just close, just like cross hands, and then open. Nice. So here it's it's hard to do, but we want to make sure that both of our hands end up at the same level. So we don't want to have one up and one down, or we don't want to have one short and one long, you know. Try to feel like when you do this kicking motion, there's an even feeling here. And what's interesting is if you mess around in your own practice, when our arms are out it's actually easier to stand on one leg. It's like you can almost make this connection here. So as you do this, feel like there's a connection between the arms and they reach out, okay? So this movement is an interesting movement. And again, it's one of those moments where I wish I had somebody that I could show you the meaning of the movement. Now, I know there's videos online where you can check it out, but I'm gonna try to explain it to you a little bit because it's really cool here. What happens is that you can actually catch your opponent's arms here and then separate the arms and kind of cross them. That's why it's really important when we do this movement, we open, the arms make two circles and show this crossed position. And then as they do this, the left arm pulls back and the right arm comes out pushes out. We really want to show this meaning. Nice, Harry. I love seeing everyone do these movements so well. It's really exciting. Everyone, Yali, John, Mark, Marion, Marlene, everyone, you look so good, Donna. Oh man, guys, it's great. Okay, so one more time with the arms because coordinating the arms and the footwork is probably the hardest part. And what's going to happen is that next week we're going to do basically the same kind of arm movements for the second kick. So that's why I just wanted to get started on this and then we'll really build onto it next week. So just the arms, we're gonna talk about the waist here. So when the arms open, we're gonna turn the waist to the right and then we're gonna turn back, okay? Big circles because what happens here is open, okay? I'm gonna do it from the movement, okay? And then you guys can just do the arms because I just want you to see, so don't focus on your footwork. So we open and we pick up and we step. And then we really want to use everything together, okay? So when we cross everything together, good. Okay, so let's try to put it together. And we're going to stop a couple of times. It's not going to be as smooth these first few times. And then we'll, we'll uh, kind of even it out, all right? So from high pad on horse, move back the weight, open the arms, pick up. Where are your arms? Almost there, so when we step, they're crossed, and then we move the weight forward and finish, and then we close, then we pick up, we look to the kicking direction, and arms open, kick. Come back, the arms don't change, okay? 
So from high paddle force, and I'm gonna encourage you, the, the kicking section is very difficult, okay? If you don't feel comfortable doing the kick 10 times in a class, don't, okay? Just leave your foot on the ground and just do the upper body movements. And then when you practice on your own, you can include the kick. So from high paddle force, move back the weight, arms open, kick up, step, and they're crossed. Open up the arms as you lean into it. So here you're gonna notice we'll lean to the side a little bit. Fingertips point to the forearm, right palm sitting up. Nice. Close the arms, turning, looking, kick up, look to the kicking direction, arms open, kick. Return the leg, arms stay the same. Oh, ha! All right, guys. I've been doing a little bit too much of the essential form. So I'm gonna have to correct myself. The arms change as soon as the foot comes down. I've been practicing way too much of the essential form. I was so excited to learn it that I've just been doing it every single day. <laughs> so after we kick, big correction here, after we kick, when the leg comes down, the left arm comes in front of the shoulder and the right arm turns up. So remember, three-dimensional space, Elbow doesn't change very much as it comes in and this arm rotates up. Nice. Sorry, guys. All right, so let's do it again with the correct arm movement after the kick. So high pad on horse. Move back the weight, two circles, kick up, step, open up. Burning, close the arm, kick up the kick, look to the kicking direction, kick, arms change as the foot comes down. Good. All right, let's link the two together. So a single whip, high pad on horse, separation kick. So single whip, Move back the weight, arms open in front. Change to empty stance and show striking. Arms open as the weight moves back, kick up, step out, open up the arms. Turn, close the arms, stand up, look, kick. Change the arms as the leg comes in. Nice. Good job. All right, so any questions today about this movement? Because we're going to spend a lot of time on these circles. The arm just still, I'm so confused about the arm. The okay, maybe if I do and it then, the other direction, would that yeah. help? Yeah, I'm not sure, yeah. Let's try it. I'll face the other direction. So then you can see the circles from your direction. Okay. Single whip. I'm going to make it so that you only see my upper body. Okay. Because I think everyone here has a pretty good grasp on the, the stance. So I'm just going to do it the upper body so you can see. Separation kick. Yeah. Open the Does that help at all, Marlene? Yeah. Okay. Top goes over. The right hand goes over first. Yes. Yes. The arm, so the right arm goes to the right and the left arm goes to the left. And then they come back to the center. Then they cross. And then they go back. So, so your high pattern horse, so right and left open to their respective sides. Then they come back to the center, they cross, and then the right goes to the right and the left pulls back. Okay, thank you. 
You're welcome. Yeah, it's, it's really difficult. And so the second one is very similar. And that's why I wanted to get started on this today. Because then next week, we can really talk about the circle some more. Um, Cheryl? Yeah. So uh, reviewing the circles again. Mm -hmm. So I had to make, I had to kind of relearn that part because I was doing, I was doing a small and a large circle instead of two kind of equal size circles. But my, yes. now I'm wondering about how big those circles get when, so you said you come out equal, basically equal distance, then you come in. Now the left hand, the left arm, is it continuing a wide circle to get in or do I just, you, you said, let's see big circles here and then what? Then I bring it in a circle or do I just kind of cut to the chase and go one part and So it comes hand? out, it's a big circle. So it's a big the left, circle, left arm the left arm. arm. The right arm, what happens with the right arm is it comes into the chest. So it kind of goes across the chest. Whereas the left arm is the big circle out and then back. Oh, okay. Okay. So the left arm continues making a big circle and the right arm. Yes, yeah, so it's a big circle. Okay. Yes. Just remember that when we're here, we don't want to open up too much, right? So like Fair Lady works at shuttles, if you already know the form, we don't want to open too much. We want to have that rounded feeling. And then when we cross, we, we don't you don't want to reach too far. You don't want to close off your arms too much. You know, you still want to have them open. And this palm sitting up and then it continues sitting up the whole time. Yes. And same thing with the elbow here. Elbow open when we come back to this position, right? So it's not under the ribs like high pad on horse, but the elbow and shoulder and armpit is still open. Fingertips point to the center of the right forearm. So not too much space between your arms here. We don't want to have a big gap. We want it a little bit closer. Oh. Because what happens is you're grabbing the arms and you're twisting the arms of your opponent. So they're going from like a push and then they're going to end up like this. So you're not- <laughs> I know that's kind of hard to imagine, but if you have time on YouTube, th there's videos that will show this, you know? But so you got to think that if someone's pushing to you, once you flip them, right and their arms are now crossed because you went from crossed and then you took their arms and crossed them you don't want to have too much space here you want it to be closer together because you're there you go so i don't come out like that so uh, okay i totally did not know way. that so what happens is that say like i'm less than corner Less than corner, more than straight, right? Yeah, yeah. Elbows over my knee. My forearm is pointing across, not to corner, not to straight. This palm, again, is not to straight. I don't know how to show you this. Yeah. Like if I was to straight, it would be here. If I was to corner, I would be here. It's like this in between end posture where the arms end up. So when I'm crossed, they open a little past straight. And you see how my body is to the corner direction and I've got this lean. I'm not up and down. I'm not leaning how I would normally lean. The so lean to the side. And, and what happens is, is that your arms are kind of like the space between my arms right here, kind of in the straight direction. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Like this general is in the straight, but it's off to the side. Okay. Makes sense, Mary? Yeah, I think that when I watch other people do it, because it's an angled view, it looks like their arms are like farther to the right than I thought or something. So I didn't Yeah, it's I hard. Didn't, it's really I hard with cameras. To open up more. <laughs> so. Yeah, so just think you don't want too much space. Okay. You know, and, and so if you can get the spacing right between your, your fingertips and your forearm. And then you think about where your elbow is in relation to your knee. See how my elbow's over my knee? Yeah. That'll kind of set you up for the end posture. And you know, we practice a lot of form, but just holding these postures and, and checking everything, like where's my weight? 
Is it in the bubbling well of both feet? Is my waist relaxed or am I tucking my hips down? You know, is my elbow in line or my armpits open or my shoulders and elbows down Is my head looking up? And just taking, even if you do 30 seconds of holding a posture, you will feel it, you know? And you can run through kind of like the principles with each movement. And, you know, sometimes when we practice Tai Chi, we might get lost in the form. That all we do is practice the form. But the form is not everything for Tai Chi. You know, there's also the still practice. There's also the practicing with an opponent. Now, right now, we don't have the ability to practice with someone else, right? So we can practice the still movement. And from the still movement, we can also practice just that one movement again and again. You know, like we do in class, we just do this. And we can just do this, right? And so we can just practice those movements. And then it starts to train your body so that if you hold that posture in that position for a while, then when you get to it in the form, your body will kind of like naturally do it. So the if that makes elbow, any sense at all. And my guide can be like the left elbow and my, um, when I'm bending forward, should be in line with the left knee. Left elbow, and left knee. And it should be a perpendicular pointing to the other arm. So that will tell me whether I'm too far away, too, and my right arm's too wide or something. Exactly. Okay. And remember too, that our arms are both on one plane. You know, one's not high and low. They're both kind of on the same level here. Okay. Okay. Okay, let's do it one more time from single whip. High pat on horse. Move back the weight. Changing to empty stance. One arm forward, one back. Separation kick. Open the arms out. Pick up. Arms cross as we step and then open up, looking towards your right arm. Close the arms, look in that direction. Then we pick up, look to the kicking direction. Arms open, kick, change in the arms as the leg comes down. Does everyone have five minutes and we'll run through the whole section again or do you just want to do this little single whip raise your hand if you want to do the whole section i have to leave thanks bye bye okay michelle we'll see you next week all right let's do the whole section everyone so from cross hands so i don't have my headphones in which is, makes it harder for you to hear me because my mic is very directional on my computer i'm going to talk a little bit louder and I'm just gonna say the names of the movements so I can speak them clearly, okay? <laughs> so cross hands. Embrace. Roll back. and push. This under elbow. Number one, number two, and three, diagonal flying. Brush me and push. 
Needle at the C bottom. Fan through the back. Turn body, chop through this. Carry, block, and punch. Crack the bird's tail. Ward off, right. Press. Eight hands like clap. Number Number two. Number three. Single whip. On horse. First. Closing, stand up, and then close. There it is, the beginning of the kicking section. So next week, we're going to focus on separ this separation kick. So if you have any questions during this week of practice, and then we're going to add the separate second separation kick. I'm gonna get that down by the end of next week. <laughs> In the meantime, practice everything you know. If you have any questions, we'll work on it next week. Thank you for joining me today. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Cheryl. That was great. Thank, yes. you. Thank, Thank you, you, Cheryl. Cheryl. Thank Bye. you. Thank, Thank you, Cheryl. Thanks for all your help. Oh, it's my pleasure. Good work. Really